Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about HTTP Client Factory. HTTP Client Factory was introduced by .NET team to overcome issues uh, which they had with HTTP Client. Let's talk about these issues first. Um, so there are two ways you can create HTTP Client and make requests. One is transient way and other is singleton way. Transient way is you create instance of HTTP client every time you make an API call, right? And even if you put uh, this HTTP client in using statement where, uh, you know, the client gets disposed, the socket which is used for making the call is not released yet. And then you run into socket exhaustion issue. All the socket get exhausted on your server and then you cannot make any API calls. So you cannot really use a transient approach here. The static approach, the singleton approach where you create static variable of your client and then, uh, or singleton uh, instance of your HTTP client and inject that client on your components to use it. But if someone changes the DNS name of your API, then there is no way for your client to know that DNS has been changed because this gets initialized when you kick off your application. So you cannot really use any of these approaches. And that's the reason why .NET release HTTP Client Factory. HTTP Client Factory goes to the pool of HTTP clients, which is handled by HTTP Message Handler, which takes care of the socket exhaustion and DNS name issues, and gives you an HTTP client to use. And it also gives you an option to create services which we can inject in your components to call and we don't have to inject HTTP client and expose our HTTP client to all the components that we're using it. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, in my last episode, um, I talked about how we, how we injected HTTP client and then made a login API call to our API. Now, we are going to inject HTTP client factory and uh, in the end, we're going to inject user service, which is going to use HTTP client factory to make this API call. So let's look at our demo. I have this demo, John Smith and the password. And when I log in, it gets into the system. If I pass an invalid username and password, it's gonna throw me an error. Code looks something like this, where we are serializing the object, creating an HTTP request, and then using HTTP client, which we injected to make the request, to pass the request, and get the response back, deserialize the response, and set session storage for email address and token that has been returned by the API. Okay, so instead of using this HTTP client, what we would like to do, we would like to use HTTP client factory so that we don't run into socket exhaustions or DNS name issues. So the first thing that I need to do, I will go to my startup clause and say services, oh, please add HTTP client. Please add HTTP client, sweet. And instead of injecting HTTP client, I'm gonna inject HTTP client factory, nice. And here, I'm going to name it as HTTP client. And now we won't be able to directly make an API call. We won't be able to use HTTP client because, you know, we aren't injecting it anymore. Uh, so we'll have to first create a client that could be used for making the API call. So I'm going to use HTTP client factory to create the client and which will create the client for me that I'm going to use to make the request. Sweet, let's run this and see if this works. So when I make a login call here, I get into the system and if I change the password, then it throws me an error. So our HTTP client factory works. What else can you do with HTTP client factory? You can name and configure your HTTP client factors. To do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, I would like to name my HTTP client because I have a lot of APIs that I'm calling. So I would like to name this HTTP client as user service. 
and I would like to configure my HTTP client so that I can I can set the base address set the base address for my client so what's happening right now is that we are passing this whole URL in all the requests that we are making we do not want to repeat um, the URL in all the requests we are making we just would like to keep it at one place and then pass only the API function that we are calling right so what I'm going to do I'm going to set the base URL I'm going to set the base address of the HTTP client I'm going to set the base address of HTTP client to HTTP client to the user service here and also I can set default headers to my HTTP client too so sometimes uh, my API is not doing it but some APIs they would like to know who's who's sending the request who is the client who's making the uh, making the uh, API call. Um, currently, I am making call my, from my Blazor server app. So I'm gonna say Blazor server. And so that my API can, uh, you know, capture this user, user agent and, you know, log the information and they can do analysis. My API is not doing it, but in the future, I'm gonna add it so that I can pass this uh, as a request header as a um, every time I'm making a user request I would like to let them know that it's a Blazor service so instead of you know repeating code every time making uh, making the request I would like to just put it in my configure uh, when I configure the HTTP client so if I would like to use it the only thing that I need to do uh, I need to tell me when I create the client the only thing I need to tell that you will have to create client of user service type which we have created here and instead of creating a request this way I would like to uh, I would like to create it another way another way so uh, I'm gonna comment out this piece of code Instead of that, I'm going to tell that when I create this HTTP request, um, the method that I would like to pass is post. And um, the URL that we would like to call is login. See, now I do not have to repeat the base address. I do not have to mention the whole URL because it's mentioned in my user service. And, um, and I'm going to set um, uh, everything else uh, stays the same where I set the content and the content type and then I create HTTP and I make the request. Sweet, let's run this and see if this works. So when I click on login, I get into the system and when I put some invalid address, I get an error. Let's debug this and see what's happening here. So I'm gonna put uh, a debugger here and click uh, run this application and I click on login you can see that it's creating a request message uh, and this request message just has you request you are a login and it's a post method and when I create the client then you can see the base address is the local host API user and the user agent is placed the server so this is how you can combine these two clients and request together to make the API call okay so what if what if I do not want to write the even this piece of code so we uh, we removed this piece of code and we added only this to create the client and you know inject client factory but what if I don't want to do all this I would like to just create a user service where I inject my inject my client and it uses that client to make uh, make the API call. So I have already created that user service, uh, which has the HTTP client as the local variable, and uh, it's it has I it's implementing from I service, which uh, has um, login async is the only function, and I've implemented that where I am doing the same thing. I'm serializing the user, making a request message, which is post login, and then passing the serialized object and uh, the content 
and making using that HTTP client to make the request and getting the user back. So instead of writing all this code, what I would like to do, I would like to use this user service instead of exposing my HTTP client in my components, right? So the first thing that I need to do, I need to go in my style class and tell my client that you need to use HTTP client from I use a service instead of like uh, passing uh, use uh, passing HTTP client in your component. So instead of that, use this uh, use this user service. Use this user service, and um, instead of injecting HTTP client factory now. Uh, what I would like to inject, I would like to inject my user service. So I'm gonna inject uh, user service and I'm gonna name it as user service. Service. Nice. And uh, all the code which is written here is already written in my user service. So I do not have to write any of this. I will um, comment this. I will actually get rid of it. I don't like this code. I'm gonna get rid of it. And instead of writing, I'm gonna get uh, returned. Uh, I'm gonna get returned user. I return user from user service. So I'm gonna call uh, user service, login async, and I'm gonna pass my user in here, which will return uh, the user if user is already there in the system or not. Uh, and instead of you know checking the response, um, what I would like to check, I would like to check if the returned user has email address or not and we should put a wait keyword here wait keyword and i would like to check if the email address of the user is not null then only get into the system otherwise to not get into the system so you can see how much code we removed from here we do not have to we don't want to serialize the object again because we don't have response body anymore so we just have i'll get rid of these codes and uh, we do not need any of this. So all the code that I wrote in user service that I'm going to use in my login component because I injected user service, which uses HTTP client to make the request. Sweet, let's run this and see if this works. When I click on login, I get into the system. When I change the password, I get invalid username and password. So this is how you can use HTTP client factory to reduce calls, HTTP calls from your components. Instead of that, you could just like put it in your C-sharp code and reuse these services in different components of your place or application. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.